And for this first example right here, I'm going to show you how to apply the first derivative test to determine where the high points and low points are for a graph. Here's an equation that's right out of our book. It's not very flashy. There's no application to it. It's just a straight um, textbook question that I think would be a good illustration to start things off with and how to use the first derivative to help us find a high point or a low point. So we're after those maxes and those mins for this equation. The very first thing you have to do is locate where the critical values are. The critical values are places where the original equation is either undefined or the derivative is equal to zero. For this polynomial equation, it's continuous and there are no places where it is undefined. In other words, the domain is all real numbers. Any number we want to put in for x is okay. So we're not going to find any critical values for where the function is undefined because it's defined everywhere. The next thing to do is go on to find the derivative and set that equal to zero. Remember the derivative is the slope and if the slope is equal to zero there's a possibility that those would be locations of where the graph hits rock bottom or hits the, the top of its peak. So find the derivative by using the power rule simply gives us 4x to the third minus 6x squared. Set the derivative equal to zero. Set the slope equal to zero and continue to solve it. You can take out a greatest common factor of 2x squared out of both of those terms. Dividing 2x squared out of that would leave you with 2x. And dividing 2x squared into that negative 6x squared would leave you with negative 3. Keep on solving until you actually get both x values. What will it take to make 2x squared equal to 0? A 0. And that's one of our critical values. What would it take to make 2x minus 3 equal to 0? Well, if x was 1.5, that would do it. So those are our two critical values. From there, we want to look at the slope of the curve. We already know the slope of the curve at 0 and at 1.5. The slope will be 0. The slope is 0 at 0, and the slope is 0 at 1.5. But what about these other areas? What about to the left of 0? What about in between 0 and 1.5? And what about to the right of 1.5? What's the slope like? So that's a question that we're going to be asking ourselves over and over again when we do the first derivative test is what's the slope like for the other numbers. So what's the slope like between these intervals? How about to the left of zero? So what about any number between negative infinity to zero? What about in between zero and 1.5? And what about numbers that are 1.5, starting at 1.5, after 1.5 and greater? We want to check each of these intervals. Now, we only have to check one number in each of the intervals, and that would be sufficient. So we're going to test certain x's. We need a number that's less than 0. How about x equals negative 1? We need a number between 0 and 1.5. One's very convenient, and we need a number that's greater than 1.5, such as one the x equals 3. We're going to test those numbers, and where are we going to test them? Well, the name says it all. It's the first derivative test. We're going to test those numbers in the first derivative to figure out what the sign is like of the derivative for each of these x's. If you plug negative 1 into the derivative, Here's the derivative here. You get 4 times negative 1 to the third power minus 6 times negative 1 squared. You end up finding that the slope is negative 10. The 10 is not as important as the negative part. We know the slope is negative. So we can come to a conclusion. The conclusion would be that the, the graph is falling or is decreasing because the slope is negative. Well, what's going on to these other numbers, too? What happens when x is equal to 1? 
plug one in for x and you get four minus six, or the slope is negative two. And we're after the sign, the sign's negative, so the conclusion is that the slope will be negative for all numbers between zero and 1.5. So in other words, the graph is falling. And then if you plug a number like three, number between greater than 1.5 in for, in for uh, the derivative, you plug in a three, you end up getting, I believe, 54. The slope is 54. And the 54 part is not that important. What's really important is the sign. It's positive 54, so we know that the graph is rising. So what's happening with our graph? It's falling, and then it continues to fall, and then it rises once it crosses x equals 1.5. So even though 0 was a critical value, the sign of the slope stayed the same as it crossed over uh, x equals 0. So 0 is not going to produce a maximum or minimum point. But at 1.5, at x equals 1.5, the slope changed from ne a negative slope to a positive slope. So the graph was falling and then it was rising, which is telling me that there's a minimum point at x equals 1.5. Well, we need the y-coordinate, too. So we know the x is 1.5. We need the missing y coordinate. So what you do is you take that x and walk it back all the way to the original equation and plug the 1.5 into the original equation. And you end up getting that the y value is negative 1 point, about negative 1.7. All right, so we've reached uh, near the end of the lesson. Just wanted to show you the graph of the equation. Remember, we were trying to graph the original equation. We weren't trying to graph the derivative. Even though we spent a lot of time working with the derivative, we were trying to graph and find the high points and low points of the original equation. So make sure you type that into your equation or into your calculator. Um, if you take a look at the graph by pressing graph, uh, you can see that we've got the equation showing up. I adjusted the screen so I could talk a little bit more about the critical values. You can see that all the conclusions we just made a second ago are backed up by the picture. The graph is decreasing. It has a negative slope. Until it hits x equals 0, then the slope is 0. The graph bottoms out. It has a, uh, a place where the slope is 0. But then the graph continues to fall, continues to have a negative slope. So at this point, x equals 0, we do not have a low point because it's decreasing, and then it stays decreasing. That's actually called an inflection point, which is something I'll talk more about in the upcoming unit on the second derivative test. But for now, just notice that it's decreasing, and it still stays decreasing, and that's why that's not a low point. If it was decreasing and then increasing, then yeah, that would be a minimum point. So the graph's decreasing, stays decreasing, until it gets to x equals 1 and a half, just like we predicted, and the graph then has a positive slope. The graph is rising. Uh, another thing to mention, too, is that when we checked out, when we tested out those values, when we tested out x equals negative 1, when we tested out negative 1, the conclusion we had from our test was that the slope was negative 10. And take a look at that area right there. It's totally believable that the slope there could be negative 10. And when we talked about plugging in x equals 1, we ended up getting a slope that was negative 2. And if you take a look at that, that is also a negative slope right there, but not as negative as it was over here when it was negative 10. So negative 10 was the slope, negative 2. And then when we, when we tried plugging in x equals 3 to the derivative, we got a slope that was really steep, positive 54, which would be, well, actually, actually it's off the screen, but you can see that the graph goes, is very steep right there. Uh, just one more thing to show you, and that'll be the end of the lesson. It's to talk a little bit more about the y-axis. What I'd like you to do is take a good look at the y-axis, especially right here. And something really interesting is going to happen. Uh, just make sure you're staring right at that spot. Let me just get my calculator and adjust something. Gotcha.